this poem, Wind by Subramania Bharti, translated by A.K. Ramanujan. Here we have the description of the power of the wind. One side we have a tree which has been uprooted and one side we have some houses which have been destroyed by the wind. So through these pictures, through these two pictures, we come to know about the adversities of wind. Now we have to, while reading the chapter, we have to keep in mind that not only wind but problems also, several problems and adversities of life also tend to destroy us like the wind does. Just as we have experienced our fun, the scenarios are not very far from us. We can easily imagine the scenarios. So these two scenes provide us with an image of the power of the wind. Now, how can we save ourselves from this power? Let through the strength. What kind of strength? See this palm trees. These are bending. These are flexible and these cannot be easily uprooted. Have you seen some palm trees getting uprooted? Very less because these trees can bend themselves and making themselves flexible. They can adjust to the winds. Similar is the case for human mind. When the human mind can adjust to the problems and adversities and challenges, then they can sustain those very well. And see this picture of the little heart built inside the small cave. So when you are rooted to the ground, you are humble and you know your strength and weaknesses, you can easily get away from any kind of adversities or power or challenges that you face. Okay. So the objectives of the poem that we should keep in mind before reading it are, number one, remember that problems are part of all of our lives. Number two, understand the importance of strength and flexibilities of our mind. Number three, evaluate our growth through each and every problems we face. Like whenever we are facing a problem, we are growing through them. Because once we make a problem, we tend not to repeat it. Once you go out or try to bunk a class and you get severely scolded and your parents are called, you tend not to repeat it again. Right from that problem of getting caught while bunking the class, you have grown and learned not to bunk the class again. Though you people do not follow it, that's other thing. Number four is remember the importance of poetry, rhythm, pronunciation of the various words, and the importance of the literary devices. Now, coming to the poem itself, the poem says, Wind comes softly. Don't break the shutters of the windows. Don't scatter the paper. Don't throw down the books on the shelf. There, look what you did. You threw them all down. You tore the pages of the books. You brought rain again. You are very clever at poking fun at weaklings. Frail crumbling houses, crumbling doors, crumbling rafters, crumbling wood, crumbling bodies, crumbling lives, crumbling hearts. The wind god winnows and crushes them all. He won't do what you tell him. So come, let's build strong homes. Let's join the doors firmly. Practice to form the body. Make the heart steadfast. Do this and the wind will be friends with us. The wind blows out weak fires. He makes strong fires roar and flourish. His friendship is good. We praise him every day. Now we will go through line by line analysis of this poem. Wind comes softly. Don't break the shutters of the windows. Don't scatter paper. Don't throw down the books on the shelf. There, look what you did. You threw them all down. You tore the pages of the books. You brought rain again. You're very clever at poking fun at weaklings. Now, so what does it mean, all these lines? What does, what, does they, what does it mean? The poet is talking to the wind. He asks the wind to come softly. So he is saying that the wind should not be very strong, loud. It should be soft and subtle. Then he says that the wind is very powerful. It is destructive. It breaks the shutter of windows and scatters the paper. When the wind is very powerful, all the books which are kept on the shelf fall down. So here the poet is describing the power of the wind. 
Then he says to the wind to look at the destruction that it had done. Whenever there is strong wind, all the things that are weak, like small plants, tiny children, etc., they all get scared and they can even fall and get hurt. You, we can say that the initial part of the poem, the poem is referring to the wind as a young child. He is saying that it should come softly, just like a small child does. In the later part, we come to know that the wind is destructive just like youth, just like young boy or young girl who is full of energy, violence and destruction. So in the first few lines, as you can see, the poet is directly talking to the wind, personifying the wind as a person or a little child. You can only instruct little child like don't do this, don't do that. Similarly, the poet is instructing the wind not to do this and not to do that, just treating the wind as a small boy or a small girl or a small child, you can say. And he's saying that you have a very bad habit of poking fun at weaklings. What does poking mean? Poking means making fun of something. Because the wind is very powerful, it is human instinct to poke fun or make fun of somebody who is weak. Weakling means a person who is weak. So the wind being very powerful is making fun of something or a person who is very weak. Okay. Next is frail crumbling houses, crumbling rafters, crumbling doors, crumbling woods, crumbling bodies, crumbling lives, crumbling hearts. Here the word crumbling is repeated so many times to lay stress that everything crumbles in the face of a strong wind. So the writer is saying that when the wind is powerful, it is very strong. It leads to breakage of everything. Houses which are weak fall. Doors which are weak fall. The beams on which the roof of the buildings are supported, they also fall. All the wooden structures fall. All bodies of people fall. Animals, lives, hearts. So he is saying that everything crumbles or gets destroyed. Everything that is weak reacts by falling down and breaking in the face of adversity. So the poet is saying that whenever a weak person faces any adversity or challenge in the life, he breaks down and falls. Whatever we are facing over here are challenges and adversities. The Wind is a symbol of the various challenges and adversities that a person or the poet is facing. Okay, The word crumbling has been used so many times. It has been repeated so many times just to bring forward that whatever is weak like the houses, the doors, the rafters, the wooden materials, the bodies, the lives, the hearts, whatever that is weak should be destroyed by the strength of the problems or the challenges. They are not ready to face the challenges. They are weak. So they crumble. Crumble means getting destroyed. Okay. Next is crumbling means falling or to cause something to break. And rafter, what is rafter? Rafters are over here. Sloping beam with support the roof of a building. So crumbling means falling or to cause something to break that is destroying okay and rafter means sloping beam which support the roof of the building the it will be the wind god winnows and crushes them all he won't do what you tell him so come let's bring strong homes let's join the doors firmly practice to form the body make the heart steadfast do this and the wind will be friends with us. Now, what is the wind God doing and what the author is telling now to us? The poet is now telling to us. Let's see. The poet wants us to make friends with the wind. That is the adversities in our lives. He says that the problems would not listen to us. They will come. So we should be prepared. In preparation, we should build strong homes and close the door of our houses firmly so that the wind cannot get into it. And then he says that we should also make our bodies strong and hearts firm to face these challenges. 
and then once we are strong enough all the challenges will be like friends we will not feel that they are troublesome enough he is saying that once we make ourselves strong enough to face the adversities and challenges they won't seem like challenges anymore to us they would be friends from whom we are going to learn and experience a lot okay now let's see what are the various words meanings that we have over here first one is winnows as the wind god winnows and crushes them winnows is a process of separating the grain from the husk from a stem of wheat when you beat the wheat and the grains of the wheat is separated from the stem that is called separating the grain from the husk that process of the to break grains free of chaff is called winnows as if the wind is crushing them and winnows them okay and the next word is state first which means very firm very steady and strict okay next few lines are the wind blows out weak fires he makes strong fires roar and flourish his friendship is good we praise him every day now what does it mean this means the poet has kept the wind on a pedestal he is comparing the wind to god he says that the wind is god and we praise wind every day he adds that everything is weak gets finished off in the face of strong wind and all the things that we that are strong flourish and grow to become stronger he is giving us very important message that we should not feel bad that we are facing so many challenges and adversities in life we should make ourselves physically and mentally strong to face these challenges and once we are strong enough we will overcome the challenges we will become friends with them and then we will be happy that we had these challenges in our life because they help us become stronger and better there is an example of weak fire and strong fire given over here what happens to a weak fire say for a candle if you keep a candle very uh, close to your roof or your terrace it will immediately be blown off but if you make a small fire a strong one and then shape it off with a paper and give it some wind it will make into a huge fire so that fire was strong and the fire in the candle was weak so those human beings are weak will be blown off with the wind wind is over here the challenges and the adversities and if you are a strong fire at heart if you possess that strong fire in heart those adversities and challenges would be like the oxygen to the fire and you will roar and flourish yourself more you will make yourself even stronger a person and better a person through all those adversities and challenges that you have experienced so then the problems would become your friends and what is pedestal pedestal is nothing but uh the post where you keep a god or goddess the higher post where you keep a god or goddess like the gods and goddesses also have two faces one face of peace and one face of wrath or destruction like goddess shiva one is the shant face and one is the tandav face similarly the wind also will be shant with you if you are being friendly and strong enough and flexible enough to handle the adversities and if you are weak it will be doing thunder on you and will destroy you the meaning of flourish is grow okay now coming up to the literary devices used over here in this poem number 1 is anaphora when a word is repeated at the start of two or more consecutive line it is the device of anaphora if a word is being repeated in two or more lines for example you did this you did that you did this you did that all the sentences are starting with you then it is the use of anaphora where do we find the use of anaphora over here in line number 2 3 and 4 all of them begin with don't don't scatter paper don't do this don't do that and line number 6 7 and 8 where both all the three lines starts with you so here is an use of anaphora over here please all of you should take the note of the literary devices in your copies next is personification the wind has been personified from the very beginning of the poem when the poet says you are he is referring to the wind as over here you means he is treating the wind as a person or a human being moreover as, as a child in the first part of the poem 
Number three is repetition. Crumbling is repeated many times to lay emphasis. The poet wants to say that the wind crushes everything that is weak. That is why he repeats the word crumbling. Crumbling is destroying something. Destroy, being destroyed. Something that is weak is being destroyed. That is being crumbling. And this word has been repeated so many times in a paragraph just to lay some more importance of the thing that weak things gets destroyed. Next uh, literary device is the alliteration, the repetition of a consonant sound in close connection, just like wind winnows or one won't want. Okay, all are repetitive sounds like wa wa, just as we have read in the road not taken, wanted where, fairy for loan. Okay, all those kinds of words, fairy for loan was not from road not taken, it was from solitary weeper. So uh, all these words that we come across with the same consonant sound starting two or more words like wind, winnows, wah, wah. All these are called alliteration and we have alliteration in this poem in the words wind, winnows and want, want. Next literary device is symbolism. Symbolism means that the thing refers to some other thing. Wind is a symbol. Okay, it refers to the challenges in life. So wind is only a symbol over here. It refers to the adversities and challenges in our life. So the use of symbolism is very much eminent or pertinent over here. So these are the various literary devices that we have to remember through this poem. Now some major points that you have to remember from the poem are number one, in this poem, the poet talks to the wind. The power of wind has been described and the poet says that the wind is destructive. He has linked the destructive power of wind to the adversities of life and says that the weak people break down, but stronger people emerge out adversities even stronger. Number three, the poem gives an important message that we should be mentally tough and physically strong in order to survive the hardships of life. Number four, a weak person breaks down like a weak building and crumbles. Number five, we must make these destructive forces our friends. With our strength and determination, we can overcome every possible power. For that, we need flexible, strong mind and determined soul. So these were the main points that you need to learn from the poem. I hope you would understand this and we would discuss the question answer later in the class.